Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Richard from Miss Tucker. Hello, everyone. I've just been doing a spicy and picking up some chain cleaner, not from Tesco's, but from a local place called Pendle Motorcycles. Quite a nice guy, actually. Just priced up some tyres as well. Continentals. Uh, TKC, uh, 1780s. Bit more expensive than normal, but not too bad actually. He's not too bad at all. I was quite happy. I might go to him because then at least he's local. Uh, but yeah, it's just, it's just a small ride today. Small ride today, and visor down. So let's go and. Let's see if we can have some fun on the way home. So, I'd say at the moment I'm wearing some new gloves that I've, I haven't worn before. I got them for my daughter. I thought I'd wear them because it's nice and sunny today, but my goodness, they are cold. You know, I have actually tried this video once and, I've, and I thought I had the cameras running and didn't. So, yeah, okay. I should really be better at this then, after having a practice, but <laughs> you learn that is not the case. Right, so, yeah, nice sunny day, welcome to Nelson, a uh, oh, bit of a, welcome to Nelson, a bit of itchy boots. Good on you, Norrelly, you do a really good job, and we all love you. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. <laughs> right. Nice tight corner there. There you go. That's what I like to see. Nice and tight and controlled. That's what we need to practice. Slow controls. U-turns in the road. I was more, co more concerned about falling off on camera. Anyway, right, yeah, as, uh, at the present, I have not stitched together or done any editing on my last video. Sorry, computer problems. My laptop decided to go, and loads of problems. But uh, that's rectified now, so hopefully I'll actually get these two videos out. And uh, I'll... Today I'll be probably be talking about something which actually on the video which I've just stitched up, which you probably already have watched. And if you understand that, you're a better person than I am. Hello there, speed camera. Gosh, there's a lot of people on there. Anyway. Right, so. What am I going to be talking about today? Right, so. Last video, if I remember rightly, I was talking about uh, summer hazards and detritus on road and things to look out for. Uh, one of the things I did actually mention was watch for animals herding. And I did actually have that encounter the other day. I had uh, I saw sheep going towards a gate and I thought, oh, that's not normally where they have some food. And I slowed down and just around the corner they were in the road. So that's always good. Uh, I should be in the right gear. There we go. That's better. Always be in the right gear. Remember the gear, look. Right. So, yeah. So they were in the road. So I've, the other day as well, I've had many, many. Uh, one, one trip to work. A trip to work is only twelve minutes long. Well, twelve to six minutes, sixteen minutes, depending on uh, how fast I want to go. Uh, and within that, I had seven problems that weren't my own that I had to actually use my knowledge to get around. First off, I was coming out of my house, and a runner ran straight past me, and I just I just stopped my bike. I was only doing like two miles an hour, just going over the cobbles, but going over cobbles. 
pretty dangerous, uh, especially to stop on. And on old cobbles where everything's undulating anyway. And I missed him by about an inch, I think. Uh, all he said was, sorry, and he ran off. Uh, how he couldn't hear the uh, motorbike is beyond me. But that was number one. The other one was a hole appeared in the middle of the road. It just it just crumbled in front of me. It was really hard. Don't know how or, how or why, if anyone knows, please put it down in the comments, because it was really freaky. So I had to dodge around that. So it was around about where that band is now. So I had to dodge. I went around it like that. And then as soon as I'd done that, someone came on the other side, threw a glass bottle out of a window, and it smashed in front of me. So I had to do that. And uh, then I went round a corner, and there was a hubcap in the middle of the road, right on my line. So I had to pop up right and try and get round it. So that was interesting. I had a uh, horse, which it was coming up. I was, I was starting to turn around. I noticed it was stood, and the rider looked a bit perplexed. So I thought, oh, gosh, this horse isn't having a fun day. And there was a car trying to get past it, and I think the car must have been upsetting it because I came round, and I was about uh, 200 metres from it. I decided to turn my engine off. And, the, and uh, even though my engine was turned off, the, the horse was booking and rearing, and it really didn't like it. So I just sat. And the rider calmed down. If you've ever ridden a horse, you know that the horse can actually feel your emotions. So if you're feeling het up and scared, the horse tends to feel it as well. Uh, she started calming down, and the horse started calming down. And as she was coming towards me, I started talking to her from my helmet. And I was just telling her, you know, it's, it's all right, it's fine. So I got my engine stopped. I'm not going to start it until you're out of view. I don't care if I have to block traffic. You take care of the horse. You take care of yourself. She calmed down. The horse calmed down. It was all fine. I started. We sat off. It was fine. Going down that hill, I had this uh, uh, self-hire van on a single track lane come right at me. Wouldn't stop. It came up. It must be about 40 miles an hour. Flipping fast. I had to mount the verge. I basically did almost... I felt like I was doing rollerball with those motorcycles going up the, up the side of the track uh, to get out of the way because there was no way I could have gotten out of the way otherwise. It was a single track lane with a with a van that size, uh, and it was it was difficult. Yeah, so I was going along there doing that, blah 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 blah, went round another corner which is actually on Ginny's Lane, going up, up a hill. As I came around the corner, normally I hit it around about 17 miles an hour, because that's actually the best way of actually getting around it. And there was a, a DPD van di diagonally across the actual single track road, with no way of getting around it. So I just had to slam on, and granted, I was doing 17 miles an hour. Just coming out of a corner, and your skills kick in if you practice them. MC Rider is right. You've got to practice your skills in a closed environment to actually be able to do it in an open environment. Just remember that. Closed environment for safety, open environment for basically more safety because you're just about to die. So MC Rider, Kevin, Bob on. Uh, You'll probably have a lot of things to say about my, my riding anyway. But, you know, gotta love him. God bless you. Uh, so, that happened. So I had to wait for the guy to actually just move out the way. He's, he's like, uh, oh, I'm sorry, 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 I'm sorry. He said it so many times. It's like, basically, once you said it more than three times, you know, they're not sorry. And that was the problem. There you go, that, that was that. Then I had a dog walk, walk directly in front of me again. I was coming up the top of Ginny's Lane. So this is like every, like, almost like 100 yards, something was happening. They walked out directly in front of me, out of a house which fronts directly onto the road. So I would have actually gone straight over the lead, necked the dog, broke the person's hand, if I'd have continued going. So I had to 
break, and then basically they, they, they threw insults at me for doing five miles an hour going around that corner. <laughs> well, there you go. That's life. So, that's everything. So, yeah, you've got to practice it. Also, that shows that people in summer, you know, uh, especially in spring when things started sprouting, nice flowers on the side of the road, people don't exactly pay attention like, ooh, buttercups. And suddenly, their uh, minds are off the road. It's similar to when I started auto-vlogging. Uh, I had to practice or sat on the bike, and then I could actually do it whilst riding, because it does take you, it does, it does distract you. But once you've got used to it, you actually find that you can multitask. And that's the thing. Again, with uh, Kevin's practice everything without your engine on, blindfold yourself and try and find every single control thrown at you by a third party. Yeah? So if you have to do an emergency stop, you've got to pretend to do an emergency stop. It's paramount. I've been teaching my daughter to drive. I've been doing the same, but in a car. I've been asking her to close her eyes, not whilst moving or the engine's turned over, just to find different areas. Uh, one of the things I, I, I thank my dad for, dangerous as it was back then, it won't be allowed now, was on the midnight of my 17th birthday, he took me out. Uh, took me up Paddy and Bypass. I was going up the road. He said, now, right, what I want you to do is keep looking at the road, keep driving straight, and wind down the passenger window with the old-fashioned winders. Uh, so, yeah, I did that. Afternoon. Nice to actually encourage the learner community, even though he's probably actually been riding probably longer than I have. Uh, so yeah, it's 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 an it's a skill that that I found invaluable because one, it scared the life out of me. I would never ever ever do it again. Uh, well, I did do it once, and that caused a crash, which I ended up with a bang knee and ended up giving me a DV, DV thrombosis. But from then onwards. Never ever gone down. Always stopped the car before going into the passenger area. But it shows that you can do things, and practicing multitasking is paramount. Especially on a bike where you've got to concentrate on everything. It's like a car, but a car and a bike's different. You multitask in different ways. It's like I can't get into a fighter plane and actually start flying. You need at least, what, 12 to 15 multitasking systems at once for that. That's why women are better at uh, being RAF pilots. They can multitask. I think the RAF said two or three times, uh, two or three, not times, but two or three items more than men. And they're faster at it. Where men are really good at one thing at once, women are good at doing more things at once. So, yeah, it's... Okay. Some people won't agree with it, but it's true. Women, you are better at that. But it just goes to show that... Well, I know it doesn't go to show to anything, actually. It just, it just means that women can multitask. It doesn't mean they're better pilots or better drivers or anything like that. It just means you can multitask better. That's it. Full stop. Uh, yeah, so that has been that. Uh, the other thing about... Well, the last video was uh, about I was talking about detritus and things on the road, and I was uh, I got onto the sheep. And since then, I've noticed there's been more and more stones on the road. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you where there is a dangerous pile just after a bend, and it's on my way home. And hopefully, it's still there at the moment. But yeah, it's, it's, it is getting worse. People aren't being careful with putting things in the boot. And you definitely notice things more on a motorbike. You really do. Well, because you've got to. Otherwise, if you don't notice stuff, you're dead. Full of a duck. Oh, yeah. So watching out for traffic is right there. Loads of distractions there in the middle. All been pulled on. What I found as well, something I didn't mention is, stuff from cars, 
especially stuff without like dust or soil in it that doesn't compress all that stuff there doesn't compress at all so it will always stay slippy now if it has dust with it it tends to bog down there you, go, you can actually you can actually, just before that turning there just there that white stuff in the middle of the road that's limestone dust yeah just there that doesn't come that's not compressing either uh, might need lots of water just to go but it, it is actually very dangerous for us so what I'm thinking uh, what I'm going to show you hopefully you'll be able to see it is just down the bottom of here we will turn right and then take a long sweep in left it's just on the end of the long sweep in left so nice and easy down here I'm taking it a bit slower than normal actually I'm talking to you guys because look there you go on there stones on the road that's from the garden center so knowing things knowing your environment if you don't know an area you need to always drive more carefully anyway so here we go we're going around it so I'm doing 22 miles an hour around here because I know it's going to be down. oh they've cleaned it up <laughs> oh gosh I knew that would happen always so I want to clean it up, road sweeper, because I could see these swells. Thank you. Deep friend. Hello, horses. So yeah, but it was there, and it was just a pile just after it, and you had to get your bike up right just as you go around the corner, because most people would actually stay in the uh, position turning position just a bit longer normally to get around the corner because that's what you needed that's where the uh, so whatever was going around there was banking and it was all sliding out at that point so that's how you can know it's always a bit more dangerous put it in the grass everyone with hay fever say choo thank you and that's it, I think. I think that's my little muttering for today. Oh, there's some there, you see. Oh, there, just on the corner. Always be careful. So many people come off on uh, on gravel. Anyway, so I think that's about it, actually, for now. So I'm going to see you all later on. So I'm going to say, Totty bye. See you later. Thank you. It's like I'm on top of the world. Richard Iceberg. Oop.